Today we're going to be hopping back on the Razor Snow Cart project, but first got to go to Harbor Freight to return the 79cc 3 horsepower engine that we previously purchased and look for a more powerful option. I want to make sure that uh, whichever engine we decide to go with has enough torque to rotate the whole snow track assembly. So the one that we got is rated for three and a half foot pounds of torque, while the Predator 212 is rated for six and a half horsepower and 8.1 foot pounds of torque. But Harbor Freight also has a 224cc available, which is rated for 10.2 foot pounds of torque. Well, I decided to go with the most powerful option within the budget the max performance 224cc. Let's go open up this box and see what it came with. Some of you guys might be wondering why I'm deciding to go with a gas powered engine, considering this channel usually uses mostly electric motors from like Electro & Co and DIY MY 1020s. But since this is a snow cart, it's constantly gonna get wet and I just didn't wanna risk frying any of the electronics. Controllers can be really expensive the Razer go-kart is also super tiny. There's not a lot of space to put a battery and hide the harness and all that. So that's the main reason why I decided to go with a Predator engine. Now, if this was a regular go-kart that's not gonna be exposed to all these elements, I might consider doing an electric one. Here's everything that came in the package. Engine pretty much came pre-assembled, though it does not come pre-filled with oil, so we gotta remember to add oil in there. Uh, user manual, some extra parts, looks like a bunch of O-rings, different sizes, and these look like different size jets for the carb, potentially. This is actually my first Predator motor, so I'm kinda just discovering it with you guys. Uh, oil funnel, and this looks like a spark plug removal tool. Right here's the exhaust. Here is the intake air box. Top one over here is the choke. Bottom is the fuel check valve. This is actually the throttle. I'm gonna have to hook that up differently so it works with a cable. So pull start, on off switch. I might rewire this so we have access to it on the handlebar, but I might just run it like this for the start. This is where you fill the engine oil into the crankcase. And then this engine has four mounting points at the bottom. And this bolt right here is the oil drain plug. According to the user manual, the Predator 224 uses 10W30. So I'm gonna go get some later on today. All right, so it did come with a couple different size jets depending on what uh, elevation you're at. And then for fuel, it just uses standard 87 octane. So here's where we left off the other day. I removed everything that we're no longer gonna be using to make space for all the new components. And I cut some sections off to make space for the new tubing to extend the back of the frame. And uh, right now I'm gonna go chop these up and um, finish tack welding it in place so we can box it in. Get an idea where I want everything and weld it all up. So I'm actually super new into welding and this is maybe gonna be the third time I'm firing up the Art Captain MiG 145 Pro, which doesn't even have any shielding gas hooked up to it. So I just wanna give you a heads up. Things are probably gonna look pretty ugly, but I'm gonna do some test passes on the spare piece just to make sure that we're at least penetrating the metal all the way before we hop onto the pieces we're actually using on the frame. Yeah, the last one was definitely the best so far. I'm gonna stick with these current settings. Well, they're definitely not the prettiest welds, but actually doesn't look too bad. Looks like it should hold up. 
I'm gonna clean up some of the excess spatter in the surrounding areas and clean it up a little bit more with some wire brush. And then we're gonna mock it up on the frame. And I guess we're gonna start welding it in place. Well, these welds are certainly ugly, but the most important thing is it's more than strong enough. My main concern was the structural integrity of the frame. Now you might notice that the whole track assembly is slightly offset to the left, about an inch. And that's just because the battery tray that I followed is offset about an inch to the left, but that's completely fine. It shouldn't affect the alignment at all as long as I have the rear axle mounted on perfectly perpendicular to the frame. And I kind of wanted it this way anyway, since the Predator motor weighs quite a bit, and I'd rather have that somewhat close to the center of the chassis. You're probably wondering at this point how we're going to be mounting the engine onto the back of the cart, and I'm actually going to be using a riser plate that's designed specifically for Predator engines that raises the motor about an inch and a quarter to make more clearance for this cover. It actually comes pretty close to the right side track, and I just want to make sure we have plenty of clearance all around. And I also like the fact that it has a wide mounting plate surface area at the bottom, which gives me a lot of options to reposition it how I want to, to make sure that the sprockets align correctly. And I also have the option to just remove this at a later time and potentially go with a different engine. Then as far as putting the power down, I'm gonna be using a centrifugal clutch with a 10 tooth front sprocket. And of course, 420 chain by RK. If you're interested in checking out any of these items that we're using for today's project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. So here's the general area where I'm planning on bolting the adapter to, but first I'm probably gonna add another section of tubing right over here, just so we can drill four holes and bolt the plate on.
I let it cure for about two hours and here's how the finish turned out. I think it actually just blends right in with the rest of the frame now. I'm just using the Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. It actually worked out perfectly. It's like almost the exact same finish as the adapter plate. Next, I'm gonna take apart the track assembly again so we can fit the new sprocket in place. This is a 420 48 tooth rear sprocket, which is a lot bigger than the one that came with the kit because I am looking for as much torque as possible. This is a snow cart, so I'm not really targeting super high speeds. I just wanna make sure that it has climbing power if we need it. This is just a generic go-kart rear sprocket kit and adapter. This is meant for a one inch axle. The inner bore on the sprocket adapter is definitely too tight. I might have to go with a different one or get this one modified. The strangest thing though is the axle measures out 1.01 inch. Yeah, I mean, that's where it sits at. And the inner diameter, it shows to be one inch exactly. Man, it's just like a hair off. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna just grind this down ever so slightly in this section, just so we can slide this in. I mean, it'll be good if it fits super snug anyway. Well, now I know it's not going anywhere. It's like press fit in there at this point. I'm just gonna drill two shallow holes uh, onto the axle through these holes and then screw in the dowel pins. Before we start fitting this new Predator engine onto the frame, let's just make sure that it works correctly. I'm gonna fill it up with some conventional 10W30 oil and 87 octane fuel. Do the first startup and make sure that it runs correctly. What's interesting about this Predator 224 is it has two fill ports and two drain ports. They made it so it's like super universal, fit it into different size go-karts and uh, whatever application. I'm actually thinking about getting another one in the springtime to use for an outboard project, but I'll talk about that at a later time. That escalated quickly. It was so weird. I filled it up with half a quart and it was all the way at the bottom of the dipstick. Mental note for next time, these engines only take a little over half a quart of oil. I should probably open the garage door before we continue. Right, so I'm gonna turn it on. To start, I'm gonna put the choke to the left. Fuel's already turned on.
Now you might be wondering why I mounted the clutch backwards. It actually works the same exact way, whichever way it's mounted. But the reason why I'm facing it this way is due to chain alignment. So you can see the top sprocket is perfectly lined up with the bottom sprocket, the way I have it positioned. If I had it flipped the other way, I would have to move the bottom sprocket pretty much right up against the frame. And I don't wanna have any sort of clearance issues. The chain alignment is on point, but there is a little bit more slack than I'd like in the chain. And obviously there's no tension adjustment, but I don't think we're gonna have a chain dropping issue in this case because the clutch is preventing the chain from falling off. I am planning on adding a small spacer in between the motor and the bracket though, just to tighten up the chain tension a little bit more in the future. Got the cotter pins in. I'm gonna put this thing on a stand and see if the drivetrain moves with the clutch operating. Now, I don't know why I'm nervous. Let's see it off. I'm gonna turn this thing on. Fuel is on already. I may have had a small incident just now, but luckily we have this brand new bike that was just delivered blocking the garage opening and it slammed right into it. Pierced the packaging, hopefully didn't damage the wheel or the suspension. And then managed to climb on top of the box and slam into the garage door that's bent. So I might be losing my security deposit. Well, unfortunately, as we just discovered, there's no good way for me to show you how the rear track assembly looks like when it's working, simply because there's so many pulleys in the track assembly that there's a lot of load. So if I throttle and engage the clutch, it actually rotates the whole track assembly without having load at the bottom. Really, the cart should be on the ground when you're operating it, but obviously we're in an enclosed space, so I'm not gonna risk it anymore because I just damaged some things in my garage. And I don't wanna risk breaking this brand new bike that I wanna show you guys in the next couple of days. I've still got some things to figure out on the snow cart before we take it out, uh, such as the thumb throttle. I gotta hook up a cable to the carburetor. I also wanna do a kill switch on the steering wheel. I'm not sure if I wanna do brakes yet, just because I think there's enough drag on the track assemblies to slow down naturally when I let go of the throttle, but we'll find out when we take this thing out for the first time. We do have snow in the forecast this coming week in Virginia, so I'm just gonna to have to wait till then to take this thing out and show you guys how it works. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to this channel and turn your bell notification on. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.